Here's the latest update on COVID hospitalization numbers, vaccinations, and boosters. I'm Rob Freelove, Chief Medical Officer and Senior Vice President of Salina Regional Health Center. Dr. Freelove, thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to be talking about some of the COVID numbers here uh, locally, so let's start out and talk about those numbers. Yeah, sure. Um, well, right now we're, we're running in the mid-teens as far as uh, numbers of COVID-positive hospital inpatients that we have. Um, we've been kind of steady there for about a, a week, week and a half now. We were a little higher than that, closer to that 20 range for a little while, so it's, it's good to see a little bit of a decrease there. Uh, unfortunately, we're still having a lot of symptomatic individuals in the, in the community who are getting tested. Our testing uh, has really picked up significantly um, and is putting a little bit of strain actually on some of our test, uh, testing ability. Um, and we're still seeing, unfortunately, a fair number of positives uh, out of that as well in the community. Enough to say that we still have uh, what we call widespread community-based transmission. I know it's always asked a lot, to, you know, as far as the number of hospitalizations, and it's going to kind of vary, but the number you're seeing between vaccinated and unvaccinated, where have we been running at with that? Yeah, sure. So if you go back to kind of when this surge started, uh, late June or uh, mid-July, uh, looking at all the hospitalized patients we've had since then, 88% have been unvaccinated. So by far the vast majority of the hospitalizations we've had have been in unvaccinated individuals. Um, those individuals, you know, that 12%, the smaller group that have been fully vaccinated, uh, they have all had some sort of um, fairly significant underlying condition. Most of them have been had something that's made them immunocompromised that would reduce the efficacy of the vaccine. Um, uh, so unfortunately, we have had a few people that are fully vaccinated, but um, by and large, the vaccines appear to be working just based off of those numbers. I mean, they were designed to reduce the number of hospitalizations, reduce the number of deaths. Um, they were never promised to completely prevent the disease. I've been asked that a lot. Well, what good are they? I, I know somebody who got sick. Well, the question is, do you know that per, did that person be hospitalized or die? And the answer is most of the time, the vast majority of the time, the answer to that question is no. Well, then the vaccine actually did work. If it kept them out of the hospital, kept them from dying, that's really what it's designed to do. And that's incredibly important. I, you look at that 88%. So if, um, you know, that's essentially 90%. So if we have 12, 14 people in the hospital, 12 of those are unvaccinated. Well, if we had closer to 80, 90% of our, our community vaccinated, that 14 would maybe be three or four. And that's a big deal in the hospital because at 14, we're stretched pretty thin. Um, our nurses, they're tired, they're worn out, uh, and they're stretched pretty thin. And we, we only have so much staff to take care of, not just our COVID patients, but all of our patients. And when our numbers get up like that, we have to take resources away from other places to, to dedicate to that COVID care. So we can't do certain things like elective procedures that require an overnight stay. We have to postpone those. So all those poor people out there with, you know, who need back surgery, who need a knee replaced, who need maybe some sort of cardiac intervention or, or something else where it's not so much that they'd be in the hospital for a full week. They just need to come in, have their procedure, stay overnight and recover, go home the next day or maybe the day after. Well, we can't do those. We have to postpone those because we don't have beds to keep those people overnight. Um, so that vaccination, you know, people getting vaccinated, not getting hospitalized is a huge thing, not just to prevent COVID, but to allow for the care for all those other things that are out there that didn't just go away. Uh, real quick, like on the on the boosters or the additional vaccines. Sure. Yeah, there's been a lot of confusion about that right now. There there uh, it is recommended that anybody who has an Im who is immunocompromised uh, and has been fully vaccinated, should get an additional dose or a booster, um, a third dose, uh, at least 28 days from their second dose. So anybody who's immunocompromised, so it's somebody who's uh, organ transplant or on chemotherapy for cancer or take something for an autoimmune disease that would suppress their immune system. Um, those patients who've been fully, fully vaccinated, they should get a, a third additional booster dose. Uh, and uh, Friday, this uh, uh, Friday, the FDA is meeting to talk about boosters for everybody else. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for some great information. And thank you for watching. For more information, please visit srhc.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram.